Hi everyone, welcome to our podcast, Talking Ed Tech with a little bit of genius here on YouTube. My name is Kate Erica, Assistant Director for Nord Anglia University, and I'm pleased to be hosting today's episode. Today we have three of our teachers from Oak Ridge International School in India to share with us their thoughts on ed tech and the benefits it can bring to students and teachers. I'd like to pass over to them now to introduce themselves. Hello everyone, my name is Alejandro Rivero. Thank you very much to all the parents and the students who are joining today uh, to this podcast. I am one of the Spanish facilitators uh, on high school and middle school in Oak Ridge International School in Bangalore, India. My name is Swapna Vanam and I teach English for Grade 3 Primary Years program. Hello, I am Vidya George, the Physics Facilitator at IB Middle Years program for Oak Ridge, Bangalore, and I also lead the MIT NAE STEAM program at our school. Excellent. Thank you, Swapna, Alex, and Vidya. So let's go ahead and dive into our discussion. To start us off, I'm curious to hear how you keep your learners motivated through online and virtual classes. How do you do it? Okay, uh, motivation, you know, when children are motivated, when they really understand the how and why we do something, right? So if they really understand it, then half of our job is done. And also, if they're given the freedom to choose their learning style and the pace at which they learn. So there are endless number of resources, just you know, because we are in a virtual mode uh, or have using the virtual resources, there are endless, endless number of resources out there for them to learn about anything under the sun, anything is available there. So virtual mode or virtual learning is actually helping every type of learner. Whatever the learning style is, if they learn, they can learn by videos, it's out there. If they can learn by text, it's out there. If they want a rap song to learn it, it's out there. Everything is there. So this way, I think, you know, technology has really helped us uh, to keep them motivated, keeping into account that it caters to all types of learners. Yes, when, when you were talking about rap song, I think something uh, just stuck my mind. Uh, I was talking about plants unit, right? So many children were not able to remember the parts of a plant. Okay, so we as teachers, we came up with a, uh, you know, tune, you know, the multiple intelligence and uh, we thought kind of musically we will integrate it. So we came up with stem, root, flower, fruit. Uh, so that was repeated many times and uh, it became a song and they started singing it. That way they were able to, you know, consider the parts of the plant also, keep it in mind and they enjoyed the learning thoroughly. Uh, right, Alex, would, yeah. would you like to share anything? Yes, no, I agree with Vivian and also I agree with you. I think in my case, the way kids can be motivated is recreating or trying to recreate a physical class on a virtual scenario, right? If the school, if they feel they're just attending or they're just watching a video, of course they're not going to be motivated because it's like watching a YouTube video. After some minutes, they get bored. So we as teachers have to find a way to make a class, an online class, as similar as a physical class. Very true, Alex. Thank you for sharing. So, Vidya, a question for you to start with. How are your students adapting to new digital formats of teaching? So from complete physical school to a complete virtual school experience, now into a hybrid learning, you know, it's all change. So change is all around us. And we as teachers, uh, you know, we have adapted so well to the new learning environment with the technology that we were using. Even before the pandemic, we were using technology. So it was not so difficult for us to uh, adapt to the change. Even for children, they are really enjoying, you know, the new ways in which technology is integrated into their learning for for their lessons, be it for their skill development, for their assessments, each of them is feeling that, you know, they can learn at their own pace. So I think children have really adapted very well to the new new set of uh, set of learning here. As Vida was saying, I think it's all about adaptation. Uh, technology should be the journey and the path towards the goals we are expecting or we are setting with our students. It doesn't really matter how much technology they have, how much they, how much tools they have, they don't know how to use it. And if we as teachers don't, don't know how to include it in our planning and in our lessons. So here is where you have to be very careful uh, considering how teachers use that technology for the students and also consider other aspects as the uh, student profile, the skills they want to develop because the skills are gonna be the same no matter 
um, what technology they use or they don't. I can share an experience. In grade three in primary years, students use technology to show their learning on animal adaptations. They use features like paint, 3D paint, word, PowerPoint presentations to present their ideas. Having adapted to the virtual platform, I think we should all uh, have a big kudos to the children. Definitely, Swapna. We owe a big round of applause to all of our students who have adapted so quickly to digital modes of learning. It's impressive. One question that often comes to mind is how EdTech will help or improve experiences for our students at Oak Ridge schools or in all North Anglia schools around the world. Again, as I was telling you before, technology should be the path. It's like an extra help to, uh, for, uh, for teachers, but the expectations are the same, okay? We're expecting the students to be successful in the future, right? So technology should be just like an extra help for teachers. But of course, in this time, we are expected as teachers to include as many options for the student to have a uh, educational and fun experience. Uh, if you notice and if you pay attention to how classes used to be in the past and how classes are in the present, it has changed a lot. But the role of the teacher is the key. As we all know, as teachers know, as parents know, every single student works in a different way and they learn in a different speed. So having technology gives us the advantage as teachers to focus on specific skills or in the specific areas that a student needs to improve, right? And they have to focus on. So I was teaching one of my classes, my young classes about directions uh, and how to move around the city. So a very basic way to do it was going through um, Google Streets, which is something here in Bangalore we don't have. We have Google Maps, so we don't really have this feature Google has to walk throughout the city uh, through, the, uh, through the streets. So it was very fun because I actually I asked them to go to my actual city in my hometown and move around, telling working each other in pairs or in teams, I gave them directions, turn to the left, turn to the right, but they were actually in my city. So it made it very fun and interesting because they also had the chance of, see, of seeing where I am from. They also had the chance of seeing how a different country looks like, how a different city looks like, because even though maybe they have traveled in the past, they haven't had that experience in recent years. Uh, Bidi, I don't know how, what your experience is in this, uh, in this mode. Yeah, that was really nice to hear, Alex. That, that would have been a wonderful experience for the students. I wish I was there in your class at that time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, for the students, you know, as Alex rightly said, uh, technology should be a path. So children are very comfortable using technology. And yes, uh, we should also consider the fact that some of them will get distracted using too much technology and which should be thoroughly monitored. But taking the positive side, you know, children really enjoy when the learning experiences that are given to them, uh, you know, it is beyond the textbooks. They get a chance to explore beyond the textbook. So as a science teacher, using technology to get real-time data about anything around the world, like, for example, what amount of fossil fuel is being used up every day, or how many years more can we continue using fossil fuels? So this is where a teacher plays a crucial role to instigate curiosity in them and encourage them, you know, to think critically and act creatively. Great. So I'd like to talk a little more about the actual technology that we're using at our schools. How do you think that we, as North Anglia teachers, are using technology for the benefit of our learners? First of all, you know, the technology has helped us save time and, you know, it really avoids duplication of work. For instance, there have been times when quite a lot of students were not able to join classes. They miss classes due to various reasons. Uh, and, you know, we have we have to ex sit with them, explain it to them again. But now what happens is with the Teams call or with the Google Classroom, whichever platform that we are using, we can record the calls. And the child, even if he's present in the class or if he's not present in the class, he can see that again and revise the lessons or go over it again. And this has reduced uh, the effort that each of us have to put drastically. Even with documentation, technology has really helped us to save time and to do things in a more manageable and effective way. True, Vidya. I love that thought about how technology helps us with time management. Alex, what do you think? I am talking from a Spanish or from a language teacher uh, perspective. Technology has helped, has helped me a lot. Technology helps us as teachers, as language teachers, 
we can go through the recording, for example. If we have an, an oral exam, we can go through it. We don't have to remember every single thing they say. We can play it over and over and over again, and we can give immediate feedback. We don't have to wait too long to give feedback for the students. They can identify specifically exactly where are the flaws and where they have to work on, and that also helps us uh, as teachers to, give, uh, to get better results on the students. For teachers, for students, we also have this um, benefit being part of North Anglia, we are part of a big, big family that goes around the world. We have um, many ways to connect with teachers globally. The students have ways to connect with other students. They learn about other countries. We also improve our teachings. We also improve our lessons by discussing with other teachers uh, in other schools, in other campuses around the world. And for our last question for this episode, as Oak Ridge teachers, what is the change you foresee in coming years in the education system as a whole? Okay, uh, so the change that I foresee is drastic. Yeah, it, is, uh, it will be a drastic change from the traditional way of schooling. So we have already envisioned our school to be a place where learning is well differentiated and there is personalization of content delivered to every student. So this we are already into it. Right, we have got different platforms like, uh, you know, we have Calido, which is a platform which is for personalized skill development for every student. Now, you know, in the future, students will not be expected to learn answer, to, to just answer the questions, but I think, you know, students will be entertained to ask questions, ask the right kind of questions and to solve real life problems. So questions like, you know, if a pandemic strikes again, or, uh, you know, if a disaster strikes again due to climate change or any other, any other thing, are we prepared? These are the kind of questions that the students should be en encouraged to ask in the future because knowledge will be there for everybody. What they do with that knowledge is what will really make the difference. So our school, you know, the school vision is to create compassionate, future ready individuals who can positively influence the world. So that is where I see all the schools in the near future. Compassion should be in, uh, inculcated in all the students and those students will really make a difference in the field of education. Anyone else have any thoughts? Um, yes, I think as we have discussed uh, during the last minutes, technology is going to stay and we as teachers are finding ways to make it fun for the students. Again, um, I think I can speak on behalf of all my colleagues, of all our colleagues, that we are doing our best to learn every day something new, to make the classes different, to make the classes special, to make uh, good people from our students, to make happy students. So um, thank you very much for your time. It was great to discuss this with you. And I really hope to, to see you soon and to maybe to potential students to meet you around or here in the school. So as Alex rightly said, technology is here to stay, stay and we are going to take it forward as teachers and for our students, we learn a lot from them and we are being open-minded to learn a lot from them. So take the right things from the technology that is offering and make the learning fun and engaging for our learners. All right, those were some very intriguing thoughts and a lot to think about in terms of how EdTech is helping our students. I'd like to thank everyone for joining today's episode. Thank you, Swapna, Alex and Vidya from Oak Ridge Bangalore. And of course, a special thanks to our parents watching around the world here on YouTube. If you want to know more about our schools in India, head to www.oakridge.in or nordanglia.com for more info. Thanks a lot and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you.